Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're back down at our local community college and we're gonna be doing some in-ground planting today rather than containers. I actually don't know how much we're gonna get done today. Like, I don't know, I know where we're starting today, but I don't know where we're gonna finish today. We've got quite a bit left to do and I've got a ton of plants here. In fact, Paul, you can see Paul and Aaron back there. Aaron's gonna be filming and Paul's gonna help me. So hopefully we can kind of whip through some of this planting area quickly because they have graduation in a little over three weeks. And even though this stuff's not gonna put on a whole bunch of growth in that amount of time, it will start growing a little bit and there will probably be some really nice color. So let me show you all these plants because they look pretty impressive where they're sitting here. Look at all of these beautiful things. I'm so excited about them. So all of these are things we've tried out. We've grown a lot in the past. They do really well for us. Like I'm really, I feel like I'm very familiar with these things and that was the whole goal of all the plantings down here this year. To use fewer plants, but those things that grew big and created a huge impact. Because you know, and I've seen questions about perennials. Why aren't we using perennials in these areas? There are some, and I'll show you in a second, but there's Rebecca coming up, perennial grass, there's salvia right there. And while the salvia, like right now it's glorious, but in three weeks time during graduation, it'll be done blooming and they'll have to shear it back and it won't look that great. And that's the problem with perennials is that they have a season like they fluctuate with their blooms Annuals don't do that. So in an area where you want it to look pretty all season long annuals will bring that They'll bring that drama I guess and the color and just the beauty all the time. Okie doke So let's go through the plants really quick. We've got play in the blue salvia one of my favorite annuals ever Because and they're small right now these grow two to four feet tall they get quite wide too. And then this is just the start of the bloom. So the blooms get like pretty long. They're gorgeous color. The calyx that holds the blooms on to the stalk, they stay colorful even when the blooms fade and fall off. So they never look like they need to be deadheaded and they don't have to be in order to keep blooming. They will just keep blooming. But not only their bloom color, I love the look of their leaves. Aren't those just glorious? It's kind of like a shiny velvety, beautiful green. I just love it. I think they're so beautiful. Then of course we've got Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. When they said they wanted high impact with fewer plants, I was like immediately thought we're gonna put bubblegum in here because one of these plants will get enormous um, and you never need very many of these to make a huge impact. Well, you can see even just in their trays how beautiful they are. Then we've got a whole bunch of Suncredible Sunflowers. You can see tons of buds coming on, but just a couple of flowers, a little bit of color, but they will color up here pretty quick. These grow anywhere from two to four feet tall. In my experience, they stay on the four feet side of things and they get nice and bushy, lots of branches, lots of blooms. Um, and they're actually pretty even when they don't, um, the, like the blooms are done because the bloom petals will fall off and then they'll have these like little buttons and they look pretty cute on the plant. So they're also a very low maintenance one. And these don't need a lot of fertilizer. Like you can put in slow release like we're gonna do today. And that's pretty much all they need all season which is great. Then we've got heated up yellow gallardia, which is absolutely beautiful. I can tell that some of them need water. I'll probably water these before we plant. I did not do that before we left. These get about two by two and they're just filled with these beautiful bright flowers and they're just so, I don't know. They're a very um, like cottagey feeling plant. I really like them. And when they're done blooming and I don't even see an example right now, let's see. Is there one that's done blooming? Well, this one's almost done. All these petals will fall off and then again, we're left with these cute little spheres. So it kind of looks like just a different interesting bloom even without the petals on them. But these get very full and they have color all season and I've tried these both in the landscape, in uh, containers and in our cut flower garden and they have performed well in every situation. Then we have Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime I like to use sweet potato vine as a ground cover sometimes because of how fast they grow and how thick they get. And they do bring a nice pop of um, kind of just lush green. And then we have Vertigo Penicetum, which I had actually planned for a different area here at the college. And now that I'm really taking a look at these beds with the perennial grass that they already have, I'm not sure that we need this here because these will get four to eight feet tall, several feet wide. And I think that they'll do better in the other location, but I brought them anyway. Toucan Coral Cannas, really nice tropical bold uh, leaf structure here. And that's something that they don't have in these beds. We've got grassy texture, we've got you know some other smaller leaves, and then there's a tree in here. I think that's a crab apple of some kind. Anyway, 
um, but I think that this will bring some really nice weight. And I think that these get about four feet, right? Yep, 30 to 48 inches. These do require a little bit of deadheading. If you keep them deadheading, deadheaded, rather, they um, do tend to look a little cleaner and it does allow the plant to send more energy into new blooms. But I think this is the only plant that I'm adding in that may need attention in that way. So not too bad. Um, Vista silverberry and Vista fuchsia right here. That's like instant impact big time. And then a supertunia mulberry charm, which they always, this is so weird, but they always have a more yellow appearance like their leaves but they quickly, quickly after we plant them, I plant them anyway because I love their blooms, they'll quickly grow and the bloom count will outnumber the leaf count by a lot. And you will hardly be able to even see leaves and they do start to green up more once they're out of their containers. It's kind of a weird deal I've noticed with these. Okay, you can see we also have our water tank here. It's all full and ready to go. And we brought in some land and sea compost. I have flower tone around here somewhere. Oh, I think it's in the other truck. I think it's to see it over there. So we'll be lightly amending the areas where we're planting, just like directly in the planting holes. And that's it. I'm seeing drip tubing already in here. So here's just a kind of a little look around. Oh, look, we've got some color already. Oh, that'll be fun. I don't even know if we need to use Sun Credibles down here. I'm thinking just like the play in the blues will be fine. Huh. Anyway, so yeah, a lot of Rudbeckia, which is a great perennial to use in areas like this. Like I would say Rudbeckia is a little bit better in terms of um, flower staying power than even the salvia. Because uh, once the salvia is done, shear it back and it will bloom again, but it takes several weeks to do that. And then I'm thinking is this some kind of panicum perennial grass in here. I'm thinking that's what it is. But it's basically just a repeat in all of the triangular sections. These sections over here do not have crab apples, which is different than over here. There's a section over there. Look at those boys just chilling in the shade. Oh, not for not for long. OK, guys, so at this point, what this project entails is uh, placing plants first. So I'll have to place everything, make sure I like how everything is spread out. And then I think what we're going to do is Paul's going to go along. He brought a tall auger so that he doesn't have to bend over. And we figured if he could go along and auger all the holes and then I'll just follow along on my knees and um, plant everything, then that way neither of us have to get up and down. We'll just assume one position and then just keep going through the entire thing. I think that'll make it go a little bit faster, but we'll see. Um, so first off, let's place the plants. a new day we barely had enough time to finish up yesterday so I want to go through some of these triangles and show you what we did every one of them is a little bit different because the permanent plantings in each one of them in terms of trees ornamental grass salvias they're all kind of spaced differently and designed a little bit different which kind of makes it more interesting I think um, but I wanted to start by these two beds first because they're the ones that I used the most plants in so I could really kind of talk through how I would design a space like this. Okay, so this triangle actually has no tree, um, nothing really tall. This one does. It looks like this is a freshly plant, uh, planted tree, actually. So in this one, I had to create a centerpiece. And to do that, I used five vertigo penicetums. If you've ever seen the growth on these type of grasses, you know that they get enormous. <laughs> like between four and eight feet, somewhere in there, and then really wide and really wide bladed and dark colored leaves. 
In fact, we've got a picture. Maybe we can pop it up on the screen when I planted three of them next to our gazebo. They were glorious. So I think having five spaced around sort of in the middle of this triangle will be really nice centerpiece. And then I work my way down in size. So I started placing my taller, the next tallest thing, which is both the cannas. So I did little groupings of cannas. There's, uh, let's see, four right there. Uh, there's three, I think, in the far corner there and sunflowers, which get roughly the same size. So I've got a drift of sunflowers right in here. There's a drift over there. I tried to keep it kind of grouped together so we've got some color blocks going on, but I bounced them all over. So like a group of sunflowers here, a group right there, and a group right here. And then I came in with Play in the Blue Salvia, which is a step down in size. And I've got those kind of like ringing the front of some of these taller plants. And then the next size down, let me come over, I've got to go to that side. So you can see the heated up yellow Gallardia, that's the next size down. So you can see I'll have the cannas come up and they're beautiful coral colored blooms and then it'll step down to the Gallardia, which always looks a little bit like meh when you very first plant it, but they quickly, they stool out, get thick and just glorious, full of color. Uh, and then I ringed the whole edge with just different annuals and I kind of kept all the colors the same. So like bubblegum around this corner, and then I have a grouping of silverberry. Then I've got a couple of potato vine. And then I did potato vine and Vista fuchsia, kind of every other here for some color variation. Another grouping of silverberry and then bubble gum around that side. It's gonna be good, you guys. I think it is anyway, I'm hopeful. So if you have a large space to tackle, I hope it's helpful to kind of see the different layers, like kind of how to attack a space like this. And it will depend on base, based on whether or not it's like an island, like this one where you have to put your centerpiece in the middle, um, as opposed to a, a spot that's like backed up against a wall where you'd want to do your taller stuff in the back and work your way down. Um, but it's just a good idea to kind of have all your plants laid out in maybe it organized by size. So tallest to shortest, and then just start with the tallest ones and work your way down that way. Uh, but it got a little bit interesting, especially in some of the more established beds with bigger trees. I actually was able to use far less plants. However, if you were to look at how other people create kind of commercial landscapes or um, like signature gardens, Proven Winter Signature Gardens are amazing. They use a lot of plants and it's spectacular, um, at, like from the gate, it's spectacular. These will take a little bit longer to fill in and that's totally fine. And you might be in a situation where you've got huge space to fill up. These are really great plants to do it with because they will get big, it is pretty quick and they fill in and just are full, full of color. Okay, back to the flowers here we've got the crab apple there in the center and ornamental grass around some boulders and I've got a grouping of three cannas right there four cannas right here there's a group of sunflowers those are the sun credibles that kind of go in a V like that and then let's see we've got Gallardia in that corner another grouping of sunflowers and then we've got playing the blues just kind of dotted all over the place in groups so there's a group of three of them here there's, uh, let's see, three of them right over there. And then I kind of ringed the base of this with the same color. So I'm using all of the same plants in all of the beds, minus the vertigo. The vertigo penicita I only used in this bed and the one opposite it because those are the only two without a tree in it. But it'll look really cohesive and beautiful in color. Um, but they are all designed slightly differently. Let's head over here. Gosh, that salvia is nice. I wish it, wish it was nice all season and the bees are just all over it. In fact, I got stung last night in the back of the leg. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't even think I was near one of them. Anyway, we've got a fuchsia in here. I just found little pockets sometimes. There's a fuchsia right over in there. Really pretty color against the salvia. And then we've got the centerpiece grasses kind of wrapped around this grass. So it'll be a lot of grassy texture, but trust me, these will look very different from this in the end. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then again, we've got our sunflower groupings over here, cannas. There's a grouping of three, grouping of three, and then all of our other color. This one clearly has a bigger tree in it. So I didn't have to use hardly any plants. In fact, there's only one grouping of sunflowers in this area. I did a little grouping of three right there with some super tunias. We've got our cannas on that side and on this side here. I think it's really pleasing. Like, I, I think it's gonna be a really nice looking area. This corner and this corner pretty much look the same. So we'll just hit this one right over here. And these are looking good too. Need a little growth on those centerpiece angelonias. 
we have temps in the high 90s coming at the end of our 10 day. So our summer is upon us and these plants will just take off. Really beautiful color. There's a variegated euonymus in there. And then our salvia, the ornamental grass, the crab apple, and then all of our annuals. So in that corner, I've got the uh, cannas and supertunia silverberry and bubblegum. And then right in here, I've got a couple play in the blues and we've got a grouping of sunflower. So it goes uh, sunflower, sunflower, and sunflower. And I tried to put the yellow sunflowers and the yellow gallardia away from where the ridbackia, which is yellow, is. Right around this tree, I swung some gallardia around it. So there are five coming around the tree and then fuchsia and the potato vine. And then in this bed here, the ridbackia still needs to fill in this corner, but it will do that quickly. So I just popped a bubblegum here on the end. And then we've got our grouping of cannas over here, kind of in the shade. And there's actually a huge patch of ridbackia in that corner. And we've got play in the blue salvia grouping here, a little swoop of uh, gallardia, bubblegum. And in this corner, oh, right over here, we've got a grouping of sunflowers. And in this corner, we've got more gallardia, cannas, and some supertunia bubblegum. I think it went pretty well for a first year project. Next year, I'll be able to plan a little bit better in terms of uh, amount of plants. We had to go home, Aaron went home and got three extra flats of plants just to kind of fill in some holes and gaps because where I thought there were perennials, there wasn't. In some areas, there was Rudbeckia where I didn't know there was. We came down here and looked at it uh, when it was winter. So I couldn't tell where there were perennials and things like that or how exactly the area would fill in. Um, so now I have a much better idea of how many plants based on their mature size that I would will need in the future to fill them up. And this was very much so a group effort. We had Paul down here helping us yesterday, thank goodness. We took turns on the auger. You know, when you do any one thing repetitively, it gets really tiring. So we kind of took turns um, doing that and then we spread compost and uh, flower tone and got them all planted. So we just kind of, I don't know, all of these beds, eight beds, we got down here at about, I wanna say 132 and we were done by five. So pretty good. I'm just really hoping that by showing these projects that you will be able to one, see some different fun plant combinations. And if you're the type of person who's like, I'd love to do that, but I'm not really great with color or figuring out like how to layer things. I hope kind of seeing how we've layered them in these beds, it gives you some ideas. Also a really good idea. If you ever see like a uh, pot combination or a hanging basket combination that you love, like maybe I mean, you can get on Proven Winner's website and go to their container gardening recipe search. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas. And if you see a hanging basket on there that you're like, that speaks to me. Maybe it's red, yellow, and purple. So you know those colors are something that really are pleasing to your eye. You can go with that. Like you can get a lot of good ideas just from one container arrangement, and then you can expand it to something different and something bigger if you want to. So anyway, guys, that's it for this area. I do want to show you really quick the both of the entry gardens that we planted up a week or two ago, uh, because they did get the drip run and they got a mulch. So they look so nice, even though the plants haven't really put on a lot of growth. So let's head to one of those areas now. Oh my goodness, doesn't this look so much better with a little bit of mulch? It could be a little bit thicker because some of the drip tubing is showing and that happens at our house too because every time you turn on the water system or when it turns on, the whole tubing, it shakes a little bit as the water's initially making its way through the tubing. And so it eventually just shakes all of the mulch off the top of it. Um, so you have to be pretty thick with it. However, these plants will be big and they'll cover the whole thing. Even if you weren't to mulch, these plants would cover it up. So everything's looking pretty good. There's a few dry blades on the grass. We um, had a little bit of a water issue right, right immediately after we planted. They went three or four days, I think from when we, well, we watered them in when we first Yeah, them. and we watered them in deeply. Yeah, we did, but there was a miscommunication because um, they were supposed to get the drip in and then I think it just took a little bit longer to get the drip than mm -hmm. was anticipated. Yeah, <laughs> as projects usually happen. But either way, these plants will be totally fine. Um, and we've got groupings of purple fountain grass, groupings of plain the blue salvia, supertunia bubblegum, uh, some incredible sunflowers. I used a lot of the same colors throughout the campus. And then when we worked on containers, like in that container over there, I put supertunia really red. So in just little pockets, I did some different colors. Anyway, and then the container over here, the bubble gum already looks like it's starting to fill in. It's super exciting. All right, so here's the other one. This was the huge area that we planted up. And it's such a huge difference to have that beautiful mulch instead of the white soil. I love it. I use the same plants in this one as we did in the last one. 
the Truffle of Pink Gumfrina, the Suncredibles, the Play in the Blues, Supertunia, uh, Mini Vista Indigo right here. Uh, we've got just pink, blues, and yellows for the most part. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that area come together around the fountain. It was really fun to plant over there. Um, there were students like coming to and from their classes and it was really like nice weather and I could hear the fountain and it's just fun to be outside of your own space. Um, and I'm gonna be really looking forward to watching the progress this season, how all of these things do. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.